Hi, good day. Again, this is Teacher Jules, and um, I'll be discussing about the topic, a holistic perspective, the philosopher's way. Okay, but before we uh, proceed to our new lesson, let us first review our past lesson. Okay, so last time, we have discussed about the word philosophy. So philosophy is derived from the two Greek words, philo, which means love, and sophia, which means wisdom. Therefore, philosophy is the love of wisdom. So philosophy is defined as the study that uses human reason to investigate the uh, ultimate causes, reasons, and principles which govern all things. So philosophy deals with the big questions in our lives, okay? All right, so we have also discussed about the different branches of philosophy, right? So th these branches are divided into two. We have the uh, cognitive and normative branch of philosophy, so under uh, cognitive branch, we have logic, epistemology, and metaphysics. Meanwhile, under uh, normative branch, we have ethics, political philosophy, and aesthetics. And of course, uh, philosophy of the human person, which can be uh, normative, can be both normative and cognitive branch of philosophy. And actually, there are uh, many more branches of philosophy. So I just discussed about the major branches. Okay, and we uh, also discussed about the history of philosophy. Now, um, let's uh, move on to our new topic, okay? So, uh, let us first have an activity. So, what I'd like you to do is to read the, the poem, or poem, if you can, you can we can also uh, um, pronounce it as poem, okay? This is how uh, most of the students and teachers pronounce it but uh, it can uh, anyway it can be uh, acceptable okay it is acceptable naman all right but in the uh, google translate and other uh, sources it is actually pronounced as poem okay so read the poem written by john Sachs on the classic indian legend of the six blind men and the elephant all right <clears throat> okay, so again, the title is Six Blind Men and the Elephant. So, the blind man and the elephant on a fable that was told in India many years ago. Okay, so it was six blind men. A number of blind men came to an elephant. Okay, so somebody told them that it was an elephant. The blind man asked, what is the elephant like? And they began to touch its body. That each by observation might satisfy his mind. One of the blind men said, I wonder what an elephant looks like. I will touch him and see. And another blind man said, exactly. The only way to determine what an elephant looks like is by our sense of touch. All right. The first approached the uh, elephant and happening to fall against his broad and sturdy side, at once began to bow. Oh, I get it. The elephant is like a wall. Okay. The second blind man. So the second feeling at the dust cried, Ho, oh, what have we here? 
so very round and smooth and sharp. To me, tis mighty clear. Oh, I get it. The elephant is like a spear. So the blind man, the blind man, said it's a spear. Okay. How about the third blind man? The the third no sooner had begun. Okay, I'm sorry for the typographical error. About the beast to grope then, seizing on the swinging tail that fell within his scope. Oh, I get it. The elephant is like a rope. The fort reached out an eager hand and felt about the knee. What most this wondrous beast is like is mighty plain coat. So it's an English, old English, okay? So don't be uh, surprised if I'm reading an old English, okay? Oh, I get it. The elephant is like a tree. All right. How about the fifth blind man? The fifth who chanced to touch the ear said, can tell, uh, can tell what this resembles most. Deny the fact, who can, is like a fan. Oh, I get it. The elephant is like a fan. Okay. How about the sixth blind man? The sixth approached the animal and happening to take the screaming trunk within his hands, thus boldly up and spake. Oh, I get it. The elephant is like a snake. Right. So the conclusion, they conclude that the elephant is like a wall, a snake, a spear, tree, fan, or rope, depending upon where, where they touch. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to uh, bring out uh, any piece of paper and answer this guide questions. And um, later on, we're going to answer these questions. Okay. So, did anyone among the blind men give the correct answer? Why or why not? In the context of the elephant story, what do you think is a holistic perspective? What is a partial, uh, what is a partial point of view? The third question, what is the uh, importance of a holistic perspective as pointed out by the poet John Godfrey Sachs? And the last question in the stanza, John Godfrey, I'm sorry for the typographical error, John Godfrey Sachs related the, uh, the legend to the religious, uh, religious wars during his time. What do you think is John Godfrey Sachs trying to say in this poem? Okay, so we're going to answer that as we uh, go along. Okay, so let's talk about, let's discuss about the uh, philosophy and its holistic approach. So a philosopher's way of thinking can be described, okay, it can be described as what? Abstractive. Okay, so um, this means that it rises from the level of everyday life to a higher level that gives a bird's eye view of the whole. So, try to um, recall an experience in which you were able to climb a tower, reach the peak of a high mountain, or view things from the window of an airplane. Okay? Have you already experienced that? So, of course, the view is certainly different from up there than from the ground. Of course, right? So when you are on the ground, you see roads, buildings, and all that make up the busy day life once at a time. So when you are up there, you only not see the same roads and buildings from a different, from a different perspective. But you see them all at the same time, right? So moreover, you also see how they are connected to each other. 
So this is what we mean by seeing things from a, from a holistic perspective. All right. So um, like the uh, elephant in the poem that we have just read a while ago, the different parts may be seen as separate and different from each other. Only when the blind man learned to perceive the uh, elephant as a whole would uh, they appreciate how its part makes up one thing. So not one of the blind men was able to, correct, uh, to give a correct answer, right? So no one among them got the correct answer. So each answer was far from what was true. So we come closer to the truth about a thing or someone when we look at the thing or person from various perspectives. So now, what is the difference between holistic perspective and partial point of view? Okay? Let's find out. So let's define the word holistic perspective. So when we say holistic perspective, it refers refers to a perspective that considers large-scale patterns in systems. So it requires an individual to have an open mindset and ability to get the general sense or impression regarding a situation. While the uh, partial point of view focuses on a specific aspects of a situation. Now, to make it simple, guys, for you to be able to understand the uh, difference between holistic perspective and partial point of view, so um, take a look at this um, table, okay? Then compare them. So in holistic perspective, guys, looking at all aspects of the given problem or situation, okay? So, sorry for the typographical error again. Okay, so all aspects here are given importance when making conclusions. So, all aspects are tied together to form a general overview of the problem or situation. Okay? So, in Tagalog, guys, sa holistic perspective, tinitignan mo muna lahat ng angulo before you jump into conclusions, right? Sometimes, di ba, uh, nagiging judgmental tayo we, because uh, we don't see both sides of the situation. Nagiging, uh, minsan hindi natin nakikita yung buong detalye, di ba, buong aspects. Okay, so, uh, so in holistic perspective, guys, like I said, okay, it is looking at all aspects of the given problem or situation. Okay, take note of that. Okay, so let me give you an example. A teacher listens first to both stories of his two arguing students before making any conclusion about the issue. So before uh, the teacher, okay, made a conclusion, okay, made his or her judgment, he listened first to both parties. Okay? That is what we call holistic perspective. So the teacher has holistic perspective based on that situation. Okay? On the other hand, in partial point of view, it is looking at all limited number of aspects of the given problem or situation. So in other words, guys, you are when you have a partial point of view, you are just looking, one, what, at some aspects of the situation, okay? So your conclusions are made based on considering some, but not all, sides of the problem or situation, okay? An example of this, a teacher that has partial point of view, is a teacher is called student A after student B accused him of stealing her pencil case. However, the teacher only listened to the uh, story of 
student B and not to student A, okay? Before deciding to scold the student. So in here, the teacher uh, failed to look at all aspects of the situation. The teacher failed to what? Listen to both stories of these two arguing students, right? But rather, he what? He or sh she, because it has no gender here, it's not uh, stated here. Let's assume that he is uh, a male teacher. So he uh, what? Did not listen to uh, the side of student A. That's why a teacher in this example has partial point of view. Okay? 